very foundation of America, the very foundation of America, which is the Constitution, that set forth, and we who believe in freedom of speech, we who believe in the right to bear arms, and we believe in the freedom of religion, seen great drastic steps taken to do away with all of that. That freedom of speech is for everybody but a Christian. So, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of anger in our land. Can I get a witness? You know, the argument over... Let me just... I just want to read something because I wanted to stay precise on this next little bit I want to share with you. First of all, I said all that to say, after we get born again, we know our nation is taking curves that we do not want to take as Christian beings. As script, let, me re- let me rephrase that. As Christians who are actually Christians that believe in the Bible. You cannot take anything out of the Bible. Once you take away anything out of the Bible, the Bible does no longer have its power because it is a book that God has preserved for us. It is the only official writing on this planet that is without error. The concept of the Bible, 66 books written by 44 different people over a period of 1,500 years, and all of it is in agreement. Don't try to take one word out of context. The crazy thing, Muhammad wrote his own book. He changed it over and over and over. What he started with, he didn't finish with. He couldn't even agree with himself. And yet there's a billion people following him. The Word of God is the inerrant Word of God or there's no foundation for believers to stand on. So this nation, we've experienced freedoms that there's none other and no other place like we have here. I am thankful for that. But the Bible says this in Galatians 5 and 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now I'm going to bring in a parallel. Everybody understand? If you don't understand frustration, look at Facebook. There's a frustration. Come on. Even in our society, with the decisions that the Supreme Court has made, you know, everybody's thinking about one or two, but there's a lot of decisions that they have made that are contrary to the Constitution. You got five people, five people running this nation. Five people who were put in by presidents for the most part with a liberal view. And one of them was only put in with a conservative president, but it was the only person he could get past Congress into the Supreme Court. So we look around this room, there's probably 200 people plus in this room. If five people can mess it up, I don't know about you, but I remember a story at the upper room when 120 people walked out and turned their city right side up. Listen to this. Our nation is shifting into a new season. Many issues in our great nation have people on edge from the flags, gun control, marriage, health care, ISIS, tax exemption for churches, immigration, war, and even our Christian freedoms. But these are only symptoms of a far greater problem. They're only symptoms of a far greater problem. Before I address that problem, let's examine what is happening in the hearts of people. People are being provoked to anger. How many's met somebody mad over guns or flags or something how many are so mad in here right now you could spit a stirring happened nothing in your life changed but a decision by people in high places who get their influence from the spiritual high places not the God kind and people are angry People are frustrated. People
people are feeling hopelessness, helplessness, heaviness, and even some numbness, some desire to ignore the problem that they might, that the problems might just go away. Because of frustration, sometimes we don't know what to do. But I believe anyone who is paying attention is being stirred to their very core. There's a sin in the Bible called iniquity. Iniquity is a misunderstood sin, but it mainly means lawlessness. If you have disrespect, if you're a child and you disrespect your parents, it is iniquity sin. If you work for somebody and you disrespect them, that is the sin of iniquity. If you have leadership in your life and you do not listen to them, it is iniquity. It is a sin that is connected to immoral acts and unrighteousness, but the seeds behind it is lawlessness that nobody can tell me what to do. That is a basic understanding of the sin of iniquity. That is what's happening in our nation. The news anchors on the more conservative news networks are shaking their head, crying out, how can so many people be deceived? How can can all these things happen? How can our Constitution be smeared and nobody says anything? How can these five people in the Supreme Court make laws when our, our bylaw, I mean the very foundation of America, Supreme Court cannot make laws. All they can do is decide whether something fits in the Constitution or not, and the the govern I mean the Congress and Senate are supposed to make the laws, but yet they're doing things they are not supposed to do, and it's called lawlessness. And people are accepting it because it is intoxication of lawlessness in the land. But I stand here with a apostolic apostle calling to decree and declare whatever your world was last year at this time that is not the world that you live in now every person in here is experiencing either anger or frustration or a numbness or even a just ignore it and it will go away I decree and declare unto you, none of those will fix the problem. Only way we are going is the way we are going unless something shifts in our life today as a region and as Christians and as a church that has not been in our lives before these past few months. You have to understand I tell the story often, a possum got in our house. A possum was in our house. The tragedy of it, I think he was there several days because he left us stuff all over the house. When Joanne, in a panic, called me and said, there's a possum in our house. I did not say, honey, I'm going to pray about that. (laughs) The intensity of her voice If it had been a stuffed possum, I would have still went home to dispose of it. But when I got there, our discussion was not how to get there. There was only one thought. How do we change our current situation? We can fuss and fight and talk about politicians and politics and the Supreme Court till we die. And nothing will change. If you're a breathing, living human being, you've woken up into a world that has a cracked foundation. The Bible says a house that is built on a solid foundation will stand, but those that built on sand, the storm will destroy it. I believe with all of my heart in the apostolic realm as I see this region, this, this, this state, this nation, that we as a people can no longer be dormant. We can no longer think about ourselves more than ourselves. If you are a granddaddy or a mom or a daddy, you need to wake up and know the t- world your kids are being trained in is not the world you are being trained in. 
If you've been too lazy to do anything for God because you're so selfish, the day and the hour is think about somebody besides yourself. When they made the Declaration of Independence, they made their decree all over the colonies. There was people who longed for a change. They were angry. They were frustrated. They were hopeless. They were helpless. They were in heaviness, even numb, and desired to ignore the problem some, or maybe it'll just go away. But when the declaration was made, people began to have to make choices. Those who felt a stirring picked up arms and joined with other people to fight for the freedom that they had decreed. That now, but here's the point. In that day, there were still people who were loyal to the crown, even after the Declaration of Independence. There was people who did not want to get involved because they had it made. They had wealth. They had business with the king. And the people who wanted to rise up and, 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 and enforce the freedom that they had decreed were few. I mean, there were many of them, but there were still a few who were thinking more about themselves until it came, push came to shove. The people who signed the Declaration of Independence, many of them lost their wealth. They lost their homes, and people who fought even lost their life. But because of their vision beyond to pamper themselves, they raised up an army that the God of heaven backed up, and they shifted the course of this nation. And we experienced over 200 years of freedom. Give Jesus a hand. I do not say we take up arms. I do not say we start a physical revolution. But I believe within the heart of every person here, there is a frustration. Many, not many, hopefully, but some have begun to look at other people and take your frustration out on other people. Some may even be talking about our church and about the pastor and I'm, I, I, don't mind, I, don't, I don't mind that. I understand that. I lived through that my whole life. And this church has survived. Man, y'all, y'all, y'all sissies compared to some of the backbiters I've experienced. <laughs> Just say that joke. But my point is I'm not frustrated at you if you're frustrated at me. Because there's a frustration. I just stand up here as an apostle today to tell you your frustration, quit using it against the kingdom of God and use it for the kingdom of God. I'm encouraging you today. Your pastor will be back next week, but I'm an apostle today. I'll nurse some wounds next week, but I've lived too long and I've longed to see a revival. I've longed to see a move of God. And I believe now is the time. But if we give in to the numbness, and if our frustration, though it may be a holy frustration, let me, let me help you to know whether your frustration is of God or not. If your frustration has a face, it's not of God. If you got issue with a person, you are a puppet on the end of the devil's strings. Now listen, you say, oh, but the devil uses people. Of course he does. But God uses people. But the person you're looking at, the person that you are upset with, the person that offends you has zero power to impact your life. You have to understand that the anointing of God on you is stronger than the anointing of God on whoever is against you. devil, the principalities and power. There are principalities and powers of the air, spiritual wickedness in high places that hates you. And if putting somebody in your way works, 
guess what happens? I say all these things. They've been in my heart for weeks, and I did not know how to express them. And God stirred me with this message. I call today. I call on the spirit man in you to understand if you do nothing. I can't remember who said it. I think maybe, I don't know if if it was one of our presidents or Winston Churchill. Somebody said this. For evil to prevail is when good men do nothing. We as believers, let me tell you about every believer in this room. Every one of you, through the blood and name of Jesus, have more power than all the demons in hell. And the reality of that is simply this. You say, well, I ain't happening. Exactly. Because you don't believe it. If we connected in this room, if we look at this room and for one day, because see, as a pastor, I'm a shepherd. And I want to feed you some grass and get you to some water. But today as an apostle, I'm a general. In this room are generals, lieutenants, sergeants, in every form of military on every level. Some are in basic training. Some are on the front lines fighting hell for you. I speak to the soldier in you. There was a missionary that went to a foreign country, and he preached the gospel and had such impact that that country, the people began to cry to him and say, why aren't there more people who come and tell us? Why don't there more missionaries come? And the apostle Paul said something that he quoted to them, for the soldiers have entangled themselves with the cares of this life. The only reason evil has prevailed in America, even though immorality has prevailed in America, though your rights are threatened and your rights, you think you've lost rights so far. If something doesn't stop 10 years from now, America will not be recognizable. I'm not a prophet, but I've read the Bible. But I said that to say this you have nothing to lose by being a committed Christian the reason the enemy has prevailed in America is because Christians leaned into being a sheep which sheep don't have to make decisions don't have to do nothing their shepherd takes care of all their needs and if you don't everybody gets upset at the shepherd but the soldiers in the church have been asleep. They have been tied up with the cares and affairs of this world. And because we have been tied up thinking of only of ourselves and care not for our neighbors or the communities we live in, therefore we wake up in this world today that I thought the rapture would get us out of here before we got here. I remember in the 80s, People were saying God's going to have to resurrect Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to them if he doesn't stop what's in America. But America has surpassed Sodom. And Sodom had no Bible, by the way. But we do. And we lean in. We lean in to self-preservation. When the whole concept of Christianity is not self-preservation, but death to yourself, that Christ might live through you. That the power of God on earth, Christ is not out here physically touching anybody. He uses your hands. He uses your mouth. He uses your lips. This is not a beat up message today. This is the reality and the call that I hear in my spirit. I am prepared either way. It makes no difference to me if the Antichrist sets up tomorrow or if I'm raptured out today. I know where I am going. I know that my Lord and my Savior will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I have no thought for my own life. I have no thought for my eternal existence. But I have thought 
up for you, for your children, for the people of this region. And if somebody can care more about God than they do their lawn, if somebody can care more about God than they do their stuff, I believe a revolution in the spirit can shift this region. Give the Lord a hand. There's a lot of gun people in this room. Matter of fact, just them talking about taking away guns. I went and bought my first gun ever. Just, it's just that part of me, you know. Some of you contemplate they'll, they'll get my gun out of my cold, dead fingers. I'd rather we get a look and say they'll get my Bible out of my cold, dead fingers. They ain't getting my children unless they pry them out of my cold, dead fingers. They're not getting my family unless they pry them out of my cold head fingers. They are not getting my community, my city, my region, because unless they take them away from me by killing me, I tell you that the anointing of God destroys the yoke of bondage. We as a people, we as a people, can make a difference you can make a difference you may say i'm an addict i struggle with sin i have no commitment i don't read the bible i don't pray all of that can change today i just want to say this elijah was sent to ahab ahab was leading the nation everybody say the nation and because of that he married a woman named jezebel everybody say jezebel Anybody ever heard that name before? Anybody want to name your children Jezebel? No, probably not. Neither Hitler nor Judas. They've all been taken forever. <laughs> the reality that Ahab let Jezebel take over the kingdom. And she worshiped Baal. Everybody say Baal and Ashtaroth. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Listen carefully. There was two gods that Israel was serving under Ahab. Baal is the god of materialism. Everybody say materialism. Tell them, tell them, tell them, say, that's your stuff. That's your stuff. Ashtaroth, she was the goddess of sensuality. Look at somebody and say, she was the goddess of your pleasure. What pleasures you, what makes you feel good about yourself from the sexual immorality she was actually a fertility it's, it's a crazy story and I don't have time to get in it but the two things the two gods they bowed their knee to in Ahab's day was materialism and sensuality how many notice where America is at Baal and Ashtaroth rules this nation they rule this nation but a prophet everybody say one prophet one prophet walked up to Ahab. When he got there, Ahab said, You're the one troubling Israel. How many noticed that in our society, Christians are the target? They actually say that Christianity is the enemy of our freedom in America. Now that's free. So we have a same scenario but Elijah said, no, 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 not me, but you. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't the problem. It's the principalities and powers that are the problem. It is your stuff and your sensuality that is ruling you if God is not ruling you. Almost done. Hang on. Got it. Got it. Elijah said, no, no, not me. It's you. And Elijah said, not only that, you go get the 450 prophets of Baal. You go get the 400 plus prophets of Ashtaroth. And you tell them to meet me at the place of sacrifice. And then he said these words. Listen to me. This is everything I've said comes down to this one moment right here. And Elijah said, let the God who answers by fire be the God 
of Israel. I believe the church of the living God in America. I believe the church of the living God in Kentucky, the church of the living God in this county, in this region, and in this building today has the right to stand before materialism and sensuality, which is the God of America right now, and say, let's see which God answers by fire. God that we serve is going to answer by fire. Either he will answer by fire himself. Revelations, one-third of the planet is consumed by fire. He will answer by fire himself. Or we, his vessels, can take our stuff out in front of God. Or we can take our pleasures and our sensuality out from front of God. Get a full view of his face and stand with the backbone of Elijah and pour water on it if you want to. Water down our constitution. Water down the freedoms in this great nation. But the God that I serve is a God who answers by fire. And when the fire of God touches things change give Jesus a hand these people who worship Baal they worshiped Astaroth stood there without an opinion they watched the prophets of Baal and Astaroth try to get their God to do something he could do nothing because he is dead and he is materialism and his sensuality and it didn't do nothing But Elijah stepped up and said, pour water on it three times. And he stepped back and said, let the God of my forefathers. Come on. The God of your forefathers who gave their life for your freedom. The God that they looked to in the war against the the king. The one that he looked to over and over it's recorded how they called on God. To help them. And he did. If you and I, the people as a majority, your lost neighbors, your lost friends, your lost family, it looks like Baal is winning. It looks like Ashtaroth is winning. You can't turn your TV on and flip channels without seeing Ashtaroth. You can't flip your TV on and change channels without them trying to sell you more stuff that you need, you think. It is ruling our lives. We work for the stuff. We live for the pleasure. And they were silent. They watched the prophets of Baal as we watched the politicians of this great nation throw our rights out. And then Elijah steps up. Elijah said... The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let him answer by fire. The fire came. It consumed the sacrifice. It licked up the watered-down version. It swallowed the water because the fire of God is the only hope for our nation. If you cleaned out government this week and took the cream of the crop that we think is conservative, stick them back in. They cannot undo the mess that our nation is in here and around the world. But I'll tell you what. When the fire of God came, the Bible says, as the nation watched, the fire of God consume the sacrifice and licked up the water. They said, our God is Jehovah. Jehovah is our God. But there's a passion that comes from heaven. Just like the, the passion of our forefathers. When they were tired of the king's rule, they just stood up and stood up and they picked up arms. I call on Christians in this room. Are you going to stand up? Are you going to bow your knee? Are you going to stand up for Jesus or bow your knee 
to the atmosphere you're in. 